Hello out there everybody. It's coding time again. It's one I'm not looking massively forward to because it's a bit of a bugger, but it's got to be done the way we've coded this. Hello to Coder Mick, thank you for the comments there. Good to see you waiting already. Really happy. Shows the channel's growing. It's good news. And um, yeah, glad you're coming to have a nose. I hope uh, I hope this goes well. I just I was gonna do this behind the scenes and uh, just come in and show it because it's a lot of just tidying up. But um, in the end, I thought, well, why not make a video out of it? <laughs> mm. I get that with my neighbour. I absolutely despise them because they they dump their dog out there in the morning. And it just barks all day. You know, they're starting to get the picture now because I think another lady next door to the other side had a go at them, but it's pretty rude. Yeah, this is going to be a Goliath task. Um, to quickly summarize where we're at, we'll load the game up. Yeah, but it could be worse. Like, it's got better, actually. The dog's got older. <laughs> so this level is almost complete now. Obviously, we need students sitting on the on the uh, chair as effect, you know, so you can't just go and walk up and sit down on it. The sign flashes already because I've set a cheat, so we've already got enough hearts, so we don't have to keep collecting them. But if I change that, the sign lights up when you actually collect all the hearts now and then you leave, you go to level 2 the last thing we did was we we sorted out the lockers so that they don't you know, cause at first we had all the collision boxes from the desks still here and stuff like that but um, today the horrible thing about today is we've got level 1 and 2, this is fine, this is quite neat and tidy it's just almost a copy paste, but then the update methods are diff different for each level, and of course the initialization ones are. But um, it got messy where I'd, in my ultimate wisdom, I decided earlier, much earlier in the series, to have a player class, which is, of course is fine. Um, but here I made a player update method. Now I probably could have done this all within the level update. But I decided to make a player one thinking it was tidier and, and now it's turned out that we need a level one update player at level two. Some of the stuff remains the same. Like even that needs to be different. Because that's not going to move otherwise. I'm surprised that's even moving actually. So I'm actually thinking I might try and get rid of these. But I am in two minds because it's not that hard to just duplicate them. I think what I'm going to do actually, but I'm probably not going to do this the next time I make a game. And I'll probably try and avoid this exact situation with my code. But if it's so deep into the rabbit hole now, I'd have to remove a lot of my work. I might not even get back to this stage ever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you? Cool. Yeah, of course. Get in. I've still got this bottle of whiskey I bought. Jack Daniels, and I haven't I haven't drunk for well over a year now. It's just sat there. It's been it, that's probably like seven months old. One bottle, just sat there. But I never get around to it. But maybe tonight's the night. Actually, I might have instead of streaming, I might get a few whiskeys. Yeah, it does. It does. 
I'm only a sparse drinker now, but I can't go out and drink anymore because I don't drink that regularly and it smashes me. You know, I still think I can handle it at the time. But, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Just trying to remind myself what I quickly did last night. I think I made a level two version of the player down here. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. Called player. I'm going to put player.asm in there. Which means I'll have to change the include, so I might as well just do that now while it's in my mind. Okay. And now I'm going to actually go through the painstaking task of making a player level one, a player level two. Um. No, SpecNet is something I only just heard about, and I haven't even actually looked at that, to be honest. Hi, Moz. I saw him mention whiskey. <laughs> I am thinking about some tonight, but I probably won't. I probably prefer to stream, actually. Have more fun doing that in the end. <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see. This is a real painstaking session today. It is. I'll be pretty impressed if I'm just back where I started and it all works the same. I'm gonna make a new file. Player. Wait there. Why isn't the new file thing working like it was? This is just me being silly, learning to use the app. I, did, I could have made it the usual way, but that's what I wanted to do. Oh. I didn't make an ASM file, so I'll just do a new one. And I'm 99% I'm sure this is a horrible way of doing this, by the way. I'm sure there's millions of better ways. Almost every option is better than this option. Limit yourself to a pipe while of whiskey. <laughs> what I'm using is um, there is a video which is quite short on my website, one of my first ever ones in the series that shows it in detail, but and it shows what compiler I'm using and everything. Although I've actually upgraded my web, I'm going to remake that video actually because I'm using VS Code to answer your question, and then I've got the extension macro assembler. Z80, and that's basically all you need. And then the Pasmo uh, compiler is installed on my system. Very quick, because my machine is really bad, and I'm able to stream in 1080p without any hardly any mess ups with music playing on this really small dual core machine. You know, it's really it's about 2.7 gigahertz, I think. Not giga, whatever it's called. So I'm gonna have a look at that now. Find out how, how powerful this thing is. Oh, it's 3.4 gigahertz. Sorry, dual core i3. But I tell you what, it's terrible. I had to take the case out. I, I had to undo the case just so I could fit the graphics card in. And now I'm well over the power. But um, hey ho. Yeah, let's go through this painstaking task and try and not mess it up. What I'm going to do is just abandon this one eventually. So I'll just copy everything out of it. There's going to be lots of renaming. It's going to be horrible, this. So I'll copy the whole file. Delete all that level 2 stuff.
website. Um, oh, thanks for the follow. Yeah, yeah. Every every single follow means a lot to me. It really does on every type of media. But um, yeah, I'm sort of just hacking about at all the different social medias. I don't. I'm not an expert at making them. I haven't got my own website. I do have a Discord, but I just made it because a couple of people asked about it. You know, so I've just made it and put a couple of announcements on there. I can't remember writing half of this stuff. I think that can be like used the same every single level. So that we, I probably still will use player, but I'll, I'll keep player.asm as stuff that that the player uses every level the same. And I'm going to try and have separate like the update method. It ends up having to separate. Uh, even the draw might have to be because we've got this sitting down thing here. <clears throat> and that doesn't happen in level two. I mean, it doesn't mean I can't use it. Because you, you have to be by a stool to sit down anyway, so it wouldn't mess the game up. Try moving down level one. So that's level one specific. Luckily, I have started to rename everything. Oh, hang on, this is level one. What am I doing? Oh, so that's specific stuff, yeah. I'll leave that in player then. Same as all that. Safe move. Pretty sure that can be left in the main player one. But by the way, I'm working in um, Spiky Nightly right now. I've got two copies of the same. You've probably seen it if you have browsed the GitHub. But basically, I'm not. Even, I'm so unconfident in what I'm doing here. That I'm not even working on our proper game files. I've got a complete duplicate of it. Collect heart. Seems to be non specific to a level. I think, you know, we might end up with major problems with the UI. You know, I might have to do the UI and then I'll have to change all them as well. Check collision stall. Now, that actually is just for level one, really. But then again, it goes to what I was saying with the movement code it relies on there being a sit state at the very least but that doesn't mean we need to get into it yeah i'll leave this in level one then i'm just wondering whether i should name that l1 i think i should at the very least name it routine As soon as I've done this, I'll try and get it compiling. Got to change this one as well. I might have to add the level two stuff back in as well. It's going to take a little while this year. The collision with the door happens every time, and I'm pretty sure that is not specific to any level. So I'm going to go ahead. And keep that in the other one. I pretty much know that off the top of my head now, so I'll delete that. This was just called. Oh, I, I did rename just the routine again. Should probably change that. It seems silly here doing all this, but it really can make life easier. Just 
just do desk. I mean, to be honest, this is actually level specific as well to the desks because, well, no, I suppose I could just point it at a, a different array of desks. I don't think it actually refers to that. Oh, yeah, no, no, it's going to be. Why does it say L1 there? Oh, yeah, I just put L1. Oh, I did that yesterday. But I think I could reuse that for any level that has desks. Just by having a different pointer when we call it. So actually, I'm going to change that. Like I say, we're going to get loads of errors where it says it's something's undefined where I've changed it and uh, it's in another file somewhere. But hopefully I can deal with it. Because yeah, that can stay in the player. So what I'm going to do is just copy it right now, cut it. Find it in a, a place because I was working on the wrong one. I'm not keeping that one. Oopsie. Oh, God. Right, that's good. Okay. Reset collision check is to do with to do with when we want collision prevention. So I need to rename that and probably just put this at the start of the whole function. I think that originated as a debug thing so that I could separate the two, but really that can just be done before well it has to be done. That's why we have to call that and then another function. But I will keep it for now, but I'll keep it in player untouched, so I'm just deleting it from here. Player draw. Looks pretty generic to me. The way I've worked it, I think these will need to be named um, L1 and L2 as well. We're not even using them yet. But when we want to do collision for the for the attacks, we probably will want that. Like I say, this is a painstaking one. This this session, and I definitely wouldn't call this a this is a lesson in what not to do. I think. But I think we'll get it working. That's the actual main thing. That there's no real right way or wrong way. So same goes for that. I'm not so sure we've even called it anywhere. We have one place. Again, there's, you can only sit in level one anyway. But whatever. The good thing about this approach is it actually makes us able. Mikey is quite unique every level. There's, it's not like, say, Pac Man, where most of the things are actually the same. Even Donkey Kong is a bit different every level, but Mikey's more different. It has like different way of collecting hearts every level, different um, attacks. So this is this approach does allow you just to. It's almost like writing a complete game every every uh, level, but you've got like a little base starting point. I've got to try and keep as much as I can generic. Sets the attack. I think that's okay. I think I might have just made a mistake about this one like being L1 as well. Do 
No, look, that is L1. And I'm just going to, it's going to be simpler in the end to make them all L1. It just needs more writing. You know, when I get to level 2, I should have a load more stuff to write. If I could make it generic, I wouldn't have to rewrite it for every level, of course. But you see now it's as simple as when we change level, just calling a different update routine and it can just have completely different behavior. We don't have to separate all these and have balls to say what level we're on or any array iterating through or anything like that. I can't actually remember how I switch levels now. I think we do it just here. We call a routine that initializes the next level and jumps jumps to this main function and then it checks what state the level state is and just jumps to the update of that level and stays there, never leaves. Which is a little bit weird but it does work. <coughs> but there's so much copied code, that's the, that's the drawback to it. It's horrible in fact. I can't imagine what it's going to be like when we've got all 11 levels. These keep expanding, which is slightly annoying. And also, these are, these are definitely generic. Victory level 2 sounds pretty specific to me. Level 1. Of course, I'll have to move one of these to level 2 in a minute. I just deleted a. Oh no, I deleted the level 2 stuff, but it still remains down here, I think. Yeah. Alright. This is a big one, this. In that case, I can delete this level 2 stuff. Alright, that's looking more manageable now for a level, a player per level to have. And most of it is copy paste, you know, we'll just adapt it a little bit. But, um, got to tidy this one up now, get all the level 1 stuff out of it. So, player width and height, that ain't going to change. The offset might. Comment that out for now. All that can stay in the, the main player class. This stuff's all going to need renaming. This is where it can fail if there's something else, you know, if you haven't thought it through when you named it in the first place. Hmm. I don't know if it does need to be. I don't think it does actually. Nah, it doesn't. It's okay. I'm being this silly. I'm going to actually delete it. A few of these aren't even in use. There 
Yeah, that's all good. You can just all stay there. Should we change that? Then we, uh, so here we'll need a player update that calls the correct one, won't we? I'm sure we've already got that somewhere. What's calling that then? Hmm. Oh, level one is. Yeah, so we don't need to worry because we'll just call level two update instead when we're on level two. And that's why I was saying it's clunky. We've got like two things for each level. But it does make a smaller file. In the long run, you know, per file. So we don't even need to worry about calling player update from player. .asm. It's just like a collection of generic player routines and properties. Pretty sure we've got, we specified that. Yeah, we have. So. A draw as in the generic. And door was stall. What did I do? Oh. I'm going to change that back to the generic one. Delete this one. Because the same applies with that pointer thing. I can just point it at the new array of desks per level. We'll get an error about that because I've changed its name and it's going to be trying to call that with the L1 on the end, which doesn't exist. Safe move was generic, but these are not. See, I hope you understand what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is sort out what exactly needs to be duplicated per level and only what needs to be duplicated. I think we're there on that particular one. Now we need to make level two. Uh, player, player level two. As I said, I wouldn't have ended up in this mess if levels in this game followed more of a structure. It's actually, when you just play it quickly and you're thinking about it, you think it's easy, but there's actually so many differences between the two levels. There. Yeah, like Super Mario even, for example. There's no difference between each level if you actually think about it. Everything's the same, just a different skin. But this, it looks like that, but it's absolutely different, yeah. And I quite enjoy how we we have just on the fly figured out a way to do that. If you know what I mean? I say I have, I haven't quite done it yet, but it feels like this is going to work.
the only reason it won't work is if my brain fails because it is quite an intensive task to to, to not mess this up. I'll be very surprised if it works first time. Do I keep the bounding box thing at the top? Yeah, I did. I'll definitely just keep that for now in the other file. That's much more manageable. Right, so if I was just creating it from scratch, I would probably just copy and paste this entire thing. But if you remember, we did do that already, and we got a lot of changes made. So I think I'll just grab all this for now. I mean, this is such an intense amount of copy paste. The problem might be that you get it to compile, but there's just one call to the wrong one that you haven't noticed. And you get all kinds of mess ups, you know. So I am very worried. But... Pretty sure we can find a way to keep this generic. Save move. Collect heart. Okay, checking the stalls. See, we don't have to call that. When there's no stalls in level two, we just don't call that routine at all. It can still be there, can't it? Door. Desk. Sure, there was a check victory, or there was some other level two stuff. Where's it gone? Well, there's a check victory too. All right, so we look like we're missing something. Oh, in fact, level two's got more than level one. Sorry, I'm just trying to quickly flick and see if I can notice a difference in the signatures at the side there. I mean, there's no sit, but that doesn't matter because the, you can't sit anyway in level two, and also there's nothing to do when you sit. So we don't actually need that. It's just there for. I'm going to leave it there because it's just there to prove that you can do that. You know, it sort of reminds me. Check collision locker. That's the reason. Um, this should probably be done like I just said with the desk. Are there any more lockers? Let me try and remember a second. I don't think there is. Alright, well I'll just leave it in here. That's a bad name. Alright, that's a bit better. 
and I will move that up into the player one. I want it right next to the desks, really. I don't find desks. I, I never see desks. I see stool there. I put it under stool. So far, I think we've done all right. I think the only problem will be is if I've left an L2 somewhere I shouldn't, and the compiler will say that's not recognised, and I'll have to figure out where it is. All right, so we've got... There we go. All right, so we've got level one here. Player one, level two, and player two. We're almost at the stage where we can just see if we can compile it, and I'm not, I'm just sure it's going to fail. But first, I have to include these. Um, let's just try and see what errors it chucks up. <coughs> Line 37, player L1. Just that one reference to it. Okay, I knew there'd be something like this. Oh, wow. That appears to work alright so far. As does this. Perfect. So, not a massive achievement or anything. Oh, we've got to clear the UI look. Obviously, that's just a temporary UI anyway. Later today, I've got plenty of time left in today. I do want to obviously go shopping and stuff later in between. I'm not going to be on all day streaming, but. Um, we're going to have to section out that UI and start making good use of that rather than just painting hearts in the middle of the screen. Otherwise, I would now clear that heart when we change levels, but I can't even be bothered to do that. It's just temporary anyway. But, um, I'm pretty happy with that, you know. We've just set up a template to create as many levels as we want pretty goddamn quick actually I really I think I'm gonna copy the entire folder again in my de in my desktop and I'm gonna change it from spiky nightly I'm not gonna name it something too cocky like specky game engine but what I want to do with this is actually turn it into a game engine one day. It's a crap game engine, but you would make you would be able to learn it pretty quick and just copy paste. Obviously, I'd have to add more. We've got to add more to it, but I'm going to completely change it to something like I'm just going to call it Retro Engine. Sod it. And then, you know, I'm going to focus on making that more generic over and over again um, you know, it won't even be a game by the end of it it'll just be like drawing squares on a screen anyway that's a side topic I'm going to push that right now to get up though because I'm really happy with how that works and the file seems okay to me uh, I'm just going to call it levels I was scared of doing that but now it looks kind of tidy to me 
I mean, the sun's blazing in my window. I can't hardly see my screen. So I'm acting a bit slower than normal. So level two, we're already colliding with the lockers. We now have to remember when we're doing this level two collision stuff, we'll have to slip back to the generic file version sometimes. We could probably have done the same thing with level, but level's pretty simple. And in fact, I like level how it is. Look. It's got specific stuff to the level. And then it has this init function, which is obviously specific. The reason we have a specific update one is basically just to call the correct player update, correct victory. I mean, that should go in player update, shouldn't it? It doesn't matter though. It doesn't matter. It is much tidier. I'm just wondering now, we've got directions we can go in. I could either like spew out a couple of levels now, like the hallway, just looking completely block out bad, just to see that in action. Or we could turn back to level one, focus our attention. I could just draw like a bald guy now, couldn't I? Just two, th two frames or something. Maybe three, just to match up what we've got. I wouldn't take that long, really. I might do that. It's a more fun thing. But I'll definitely have to finish off level two first. We, what we were doing was we were going to do the lockers. I'm reading the message. Okay. Do you know what? I think this, yeah, I think I get what you mean. But I think mine might be more slicker, actually, the way Mikey works. You can, we just paint the top, we draw the top corners into the buffer and they never change. Then we'll just change the color attributes because, like, the back wall changes color sometimes. And, um, Yeah, I understand what you mean. That's what I was basically doing by trying to move this up to player so I wasn't copying it and pasting unnecessarily. But I think I've reduced it down to as much as I actually can do. But none of this is using space in the memory. It's all just like a different call to a different version of the method. Like I say, I could have cached one variable to see what level we're on and then before all of these just done a check. Just see what that level state was, but I went with this method in the end. That can all come later. Yeah, true that, Coder Mick. That's the fun part I find the optimization and you know, figuring out how to keep things small is fun but that's what we were going to do, we were going to do the locker I guess I should just colour the locker because it did look cool, the colours so that's like the, the lid colour and that is like always the same it's just the same as um, painting the sign. But I had trouble with that, if you remember. I'll stick with what I've got and just put it in the locker. Yeah, 
It's a bit more complicated because the sign was just all one colour. But that's not too bad. I'll just do the first two first. I keep having to look at this for inspiration. I wonder where um I shame you can't see where it's called from. I wonder do I have to load that with anything to get That's weird. Oh, I've just hard coded it there. Pretty sure that's not needed. Yeah, it's all good. So the main juice of it's done here. It's odd though. Why? Why have I done it so specific? So we have a paint sprite sixteen eight already, and that's how much the top lid is B X pos C Y and I Y L Okay, what's the colour? Okay. I could probably just do a lock a lid colour there, but I'll do it with A. What happens is it's going to go through it an array. Of lockers, and that'll be in the level level two, I think. Yeah. So I want to iterate through the array with a draw lockers or paint lockers. Sorry. I think that's why we've got here all the arrays. Yeah, I guess I'll just keep it here for now. With these, we've got draw lockers there. I mean that was probably why I messed up with the lock with the exit sign because I've got this routine in the middle here I don't really think we need so I'm deviating from the pattern I could always change the other one if this works easier or better
So I'll try and get, get back into the habit of doing that. Because it's stating the obvious, but it just helps you not forget it. Always remember that because I've been forgetting that sometimes, and that can cause you because you know, the code appears to work even if you don't put that. So it's B for X. So it's much the same as what we've got above actually. That's why one day I'll be able to make this even more generic when I can be bothered. We could have another value to tell it what we're painting, you know, what size routine to call. Here's the interesting bit for the lockers. I want to go through it line by line. So I'm going to do 16.8. That's only going to do the first two, isn't it? I then want to move down a line minus one, change the color, and do the same thing. Got to put the color. See if we can do that. I'm not sure if we can. Remember, we're in an array, so we need to iterate through all of them and do this. But there's more to it than that. That's only going to paint the lid or the roof or whatever you want to call it. Let's see if it actually works. I don't think it will. We haven't called it from anywhere, have we? No. The paint lockers will be one to be done in level two. <coughs> We've probably got draw lockers there somewhere. There. I don't think it particularly matters where we paint it. Oh, flipping hell's going on with that. I notice here we load it twice. Perhaps there's a way of just pushing and popping instead. Maybe it's a lot better to do that, but again we can we can do that another time, can't we? Well Mikey get get your butt out of that person. No teacher. Okay, so it's, it's the right colour, but it's, and it's got the right place, if you look, but it's probably messed up after that. Or it could have just got the right place by fluke. In fact, it might have got the right place by fluke, because it didn't get both of them. That's a draw. Oh, huh. That's what we want. This is in the generic section, but it's calling a level two specific function, uh, constant. I need to change that name. And make sure that all lockers have the same data link. And it sounds like I'm being over the top, but this is how you get confused if you allow that to slip when you spot it.
So in fact, what's it doing in there really? That particular one. You should just go in game values. Same as a lot of other... Because uh, these are more... Some of them are, are specific to the spectrum, not this game. You know, every single game. But this one's more just for that game. But I'll put it down here with, with them. Just tidying up the constants file now. All right, that's a bit better. As some of them other ones I'll move in here soon, such as you know, I kind of like having the player ones in there. But and player can keep his own but all these can oh god what am I doing spending time worrying about the wrong thing here let's just grab that one for now pop that there Okay. I bet you I move that around again because I've got these ones here in the main main the original root file that we launch with paint lockers. I, pref I think I'd prefer that was all them were in with their own locker class, really. Because this is quite specific to lockers in this game. I mean, we're drawing the top lid here. It's not working as well, so I've got to figure out why that is. Hmm. I'm sure. It's going to load it up on my phone, the uh, stream, to see if my view account goes up. Cool, cool, that's on there. Um, What's the difference here? Oh! Oh, because we don't want to draw the dead ones.
I wonder why. I run into quite a lot of trouble with colouring them now. I never used to because it's just a straight array. I don't understand why it's a big problem. Sometimes this that this code seems to work and sometimes it doesn't. Oh wait, here, it's gone up to three. I'll have to remember to do that when I've got spare data. <laughs> Uh, this ain't gonna work, but I just want to see if it still showers us with. What? Oh, player. Weird. Now it's just in the wrong place again. But not messing us up. Damn you, colour memory! <laughs> Damn you! Oh, it's in the right place. I, I've caught that on video. That's the double slit theory thing again. I've done that just now and it didn't work. I changed it back to exactly what it was before. Oh, that's a shame. I've I've made a uh, made a boo boo with the text box there, and I. I'll have to cover the text over, but I've set it so that it stays. Yeah, I know. I used to understand, or I thought I did. Whoops. That's looking pretty sweet. I don't love the colour scheme of the floor. Perhaps we could change that. That would require um, like a whole bunch of bytes. Where did I put um, like the oh background? There we go. Yeah, so if I had one of them for every level, we could have just changed the floor color, couldn't we?
Maybe I need to use the brightness. Oh, it's so tempted to zoom in. Has it made a little difference? I think it's made a difference to the blue. I can't still see the pink very well. But it's very small, what I'm looking at. I did like the scheme when it was in the art program. I think I'll stick with it for now and see what it looks like when we've got the hearts colours sorted. Look, uh, door color, no, not door, because we've got doors already. Rock a mid colour. These should probably be constants as well. What I'm going to do there is come up with it's in the drawing in the drawing function. I'm going to come up with a way of just drawing them to remove the heart of that. It's going to be quite awkward that. Right, so this paints the first bit of the locker. Paint top two bytes. Paint remaining. Two by two bytes. So really, I just want to. I just want to move Y down and do the same thing. Obviously, with a different color. <laughs> I didn't even realize I called it lid and mid. Low day. Low day IX plus two. Add A sixteen. Can you do that? Load C A. Again, not very optimal, but I think that will work. Oh my god, what has happened to that? Got to zoom in, I can't see it. Okay, so it actually has worked, but it's missed out two lines somehow. It still looks not as good as I was hoping it would look, but let's try and complete the look to see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks like that line that we've noticed on glitching. Oh, look, it's only sometimes though. I was going to say, it's, it seems to roll over on one frame, like when you're switching the... Switching the frame. No biggie. It's no biggie at all. I could live with it in a even if it's the end game product. Let's 
There might be some way of getting rid of that so that it doesn't. If I'm really clever, I might be able to do it so it doesn't show the background of the door. Try a few styles out in paintbrush. Yeah, I did, and I liked this one a lot. But I didn't obviously have the red floor to compare it to at the time. But I thought this one looked really old school and 80s. I'd actually probably rather change the floor colour than that. Because I did check out a lot of scheme. When you think about it, you can't use red. Because that'll just look rubbish with the red floor. And if I'm going to change the floor, I'll just leave it this colour. So it would have to be green and blue, I guess. Green and blue hearts with a black with a blue background. Or I don't know. The black background's alright, isn't it? I reckon when they're fully built, they might look alright. And obviously I haven't committed to any colour scheme, I could just change it here so easily, you know. Oh, that actually looks a bit better, doesn't it? Yeah, let's leave it at that one for now. It's a random guess. In the art program, the blue one looked better than the yellow. It looked like a sort of very 80s, like neon look. Obviously, lockers weren't painted like that in the 80s, but it had that kind of vibe of that colour scheme. But in practice, the yellow one looked better there for sure. But why is it missing out a line? Of course, I don't need to load IYR every time. I'll just run that. Oh, hang on, yes, I do. Not every time, but that time. Uh. Add 16. Oh, one line's 8. What am I on about? I keep doing that, you know. I, I keep, I don't know why. But I've done that many times this series. I think a unit is 16. It's still not actually right. It's looking pretty smart now though, I'm liking that. It looks better than the actual Spectrum version of the original. Or at least my memory of it. Oh. <laughs> Do you know what? Game values. Let's not have to remember anymore. Why can't I think of a good name for that? Sod it. Just be super obvious. I'm going over the top with tidying now, but I feel I'll reap some small benefit from it in later life. So pixels per cell. Because I hate seeing magic numbers there like that. There we 
go. That makes a lot more sense now if you just read this one method and no other bit of the code. And I'm pretty confident that's going to work. Oh, except for non existent instruction. What the hell is this? Oh, so you're not allowed to do that. I think that's just because I put the brackets. Sometimes it doesn't like the brackets, it thinks you're doing something else. There we go. Lovely. They don't look as good as I was hoping they would look, but. I think they look good enough for now. Might even change it back to the original colour scheme. I did like that cyan. Cool, to think one day they'll probably have a higher resolution so much that you'll be able to fit so many text files in one window and somehow the human brain will just cope with it because I could do it more I, I want them condensed I could do it the text could be about a fifth of the size and I'd still be able to read it up here and I just want tiny tabs Oh my god. <laughs> what did I just do? I think it's okay actually. Well, hey. Beautiful. I'm going to try and put bright on on that oh much better looking good isn't it because it's obviously going to be trivial to lay out the six uh, <coughs> lockers now Really, the benches won't be that hard either. I'll just copy the desk code, change the size of the sprite drawing code because they're like longer and thinner. I'm not going to match it exactly to Mikey the game here at all. I just want it to resemble it somewhat. I mean, as I said, I'd be quite happy just to stick a desk in the middle of the room and have, to, have done with it, to be honest. Um, obviously, there's some bins where you can grab basketballs. That's going to be quite advanced because it has targeting where you throw it directly at the at the enemy. The good thing about that is it always hits the enemy, or nearly always. So I can just move up until we're level with it and move left or right until we're level and then stop moving in that direction. So it's pretty easy to do that targeting code. But if it was a case of you were actually aiming it with the keyboard somehow, that's quite tricky to pull off. I have no idea how to do it on a Spectrum without floats. I found it tricky to pull off even when I had access to like radians and all sorts of calculations built into the engine, you know. To get actual full 360 targeting going on. So he's walking up to this. Alright, so he's got the colour clash there. I forgot about that when I done that. If I wanted to avoid colour clash, I'd have to make the ink black. And the uh, hearts, the background pink instead. Shall I try that? Oh, you can't even see it.
it's quite clever actually because we can't walk into the locker so we can use the other colours and not worry about Mikey bleeding into it look at that, that's pretty clever isn't that quite smart? I'm going to have to zoom in on it to have a look at it actually maybe I can zoom in OBS quick zoom that's more than acceptable really I think let me show you as well I mean the weird thing is when you go here it goes all black but it's not too bad it sort of gives you it gives you a visual that you're actually standing by the locker so it's going to work in our favour because you're going to be pressing F now and up and removing hearts awesome so I'm going to live with that black I, I can't imagine why it goes suddenly all black like that it's just the way the ore functions working for us it thinks everything to pixel somehow it looks actually pretty goddamn cool this is going to break the game oh it doesn't even let us because we haven't got enough hearts brilliant yeah it's working pretty goddamn sweet I could just try changing the locker to a black black ink with the lid Yeah, it is the ore, but I don't mind it. I actually quite like it, and the ore works so simply for us. I don't think it looks that bad, actually. Don't forget, as you remove the hearts, they won't be there in the bottom, so you'll be able to see through them a little bit better. So now he's got the black lid at the top. It looks better perhaps, but maybe more boring. But it does look pretty goddamn cool. Well, let's see how robust my code is then, because I should be able to now just go to level 2. This finally shows off like an advantage. Because I should be able to just draw some more lockers in here. I don't know the heights or anything. That's going to mess it up if it's not exactly in a character cell as well, probably, because Mikey will be able to walk into the wrong colour. Let's see. Look at that. So the top row worked fine. Then it failed. Okay, that's better. So now we've got this yellow line down the bottom there. That yellow block. Also, he can't walk through there, I don't think. No. So we'd have to move something around. I'll try and make sure it fits exactly in a character cell.
the hell is going on with that yellow thing? Did it not compile? It seems in the same place. 32 is not enough then. Of course, I'm not taking into account the width of the thing. 48 might be. I don't think it is. That's not bad. I'm not sure what the hell is going on with some of it though. Is it just failing from drawing too many sprites? It's the size of the loops cut doesn't help because that obviously when you're looping through it every time to get to the end. Perhaps I've tried just before. Because don't forget we're going to be having the teacher and all that roaming around in there. Still doing that weird thing though. wonder why that is. Also want to move them over. Not quite right. Why is it doing that with that line there? It's a couple of lines in it. Can I get down that side? Okay, so I like the gap there. Got to move it to. <laughs> to the magic four. I mean, why not push the boat out and just copy them again? Move them up. Like I say, we're not matching up to Mikey exactly at all. Mikey will probably be far superior. I think guys looks a little bit better in ways though already. Okay, I'm happy with that. We'll we'll put like a bench down the middle. There's some glitching. For some reason that yellow thing's now gone. But there is a couple of pixels messing up. I mean that could be anything. I I I, I don't know what that is. We could try adding a halt somewhere. See if it gives it that extra time to draw it, but I can't be bothered at the moment. It's like I'm happy with it. <coughs> We've got to make the mechanic of taking the heart out of the locker now. That's the tricky one. That's the real tricky one. Because I've got to somehow check this value. I'm going to try with all fours.
And that stands for how many hearts are inside the locker. So we need to walk up to the exact locker, collide with it, press F whilst facing up. Remove a heart. Then somewhere else the heart has to get removed from the sprite. And that will have to check, okay, how many hearts have we got? Oh, it's going to be really hard, this. Sometimes it's worth starting from the top. And when I mean that, or the bottom, like, so I mean, I'll do the code that literally changes the bytes. And then I'll figure out how to call that and when. I know, I'm scared of the pause. I really am. I mean, what else can I do other than bear in mind if it goes wrong to change them? Because I want zero to mean zero hearts remaining. I don't really want one to mean zero. <laughs> oh, you can't even see what I mean. Yeah, in here. I'm going to have to go with it. I still can I can't get my head around that before. I mean, I did think it's because there was the other one that was two, five, but four or whatever underneath it. But I tried moving them around, and it made no difference. Okay. Forgetting where I am. It's player and it's level two. Here's level one. Where do we check? So, where's player update one? Yeah, see, it's pretty well written. I kind of like it because it's just in checking, instead of checking stalls, we're basically checking for lockers. If we looked at the stool code, we'd see that when we are colliding with a stool, at that point we check, is there a heart? And then we call the heart collected routine, which removes the heart and gives you it. And we can use something very similar to that, but completely different at the same time. Because you've got to be standing, facing up, colliding with a locker. We'll have to move the locker's hitbox to a greater number so it's lower on the screen and then we'll just use the same approach with the colour in the border so that when we're ready to do the you know we'll know when the collision will be allowed and when it won't because we need it at a very specific time it has to be facing up and it has to be very near to the locker and then the last bit of the puzzle will be where we do you remember I cocked around with that thing to make it so, to make it know what um, heart we were collecting, we had to put a variable in. This one. Now that's annoying. Why did I have to do that? It was really annoying. Because we were already pointing at the correct one, and I thought I could just kill it, and I'm sure I've done that in the past. Like when I made that. Any game, any attempt at a game, I've done that and it worked. I might try just rewriting it again and see if it works. But anyway, level two. So where is this stool one kept? In player. So I want one for locker now. Oh, we've got one. Oh, that's just to stop it. See, the stool is the stool. And the desk blocked you. The stool didn't block you. I've done lockers already, but we actually want to collide with, like, I'm going to call it, like, locker trigger, I guess. So I'll do check collision lock a trigger as well as a separate one. Do 
put an S on the end because there's more than one locker. It's similar to this, but this one uses the target pods to make sure you can never step inside it. This one's completely different, doesn't have to do that. The stool, similarly, didn't have to do that. So we can, I think I'll copy that. It's the easiest way. Just adapt it to what I need it to do. Right. Firstly, before I get too confused, get rid of the obvious stuff that's wrong. That should be fine. We've got a ball to just say, are we collect? Are we colliding with any stool? That was just so we could sit down. Do you know what? I'm kind of tempted to not even bother with putting the shout animation into the game, and actually, maybe we don't even need a ball if we're colliding with a locker. If you're in front of the locker and you and the conditions are met where you press F and you're facing up, you'll just take a heart. We need the ball, we'll add it back. We'll add one. We need to tidy this up because this push isn't even needed anymore. Just need to switch them around. We'll need its own one of them. So we've got 1 and 12. I'm going to just copy that for now, I think. Should put us roughly where the stall is, you know, similarly. Although we've got a higher, I think the locker might be higher. Just put 20 for now. I was in level 2. It would be lovely if there was a way to flick back to the page we just on. I think I was actually on this page. Yeah, I was. Thank you very much for the follow, mate. Prince Fose. Nice. Welcome. Welcome to the gang. <laughs> We're getting there with this gradually. Bit of a nasty magic number there, but should have just changed that value, shouldn't I? Let's leave it like it is for the minute. Maybe it needs its own offset, that whatever it is doing.
So I'll put on the player. Hang on, let me undo those. Did I do the wrong thing? I did do the wrong thing. Leave that one. So here we set that ball true again, but I haven't got one right now. I don't think we need to know if we're colliding with the locker trigger. We just need to act on it when we do. So it's not it's sitting anymore, it's if we are facing up and press F, collect one heart, because there's four now. So if we're facing up and press F and there are hearts, well in fact we'll worry about that in the routine that we call. So if we're facing up and we press F, Call collect heart from locker routine because we've already got collect heart and I don't want to confuse it. This one, this routine here is going to be so complicated because it has to draw bytes in a sprite, it has to replace just certain bytes with other ones to remove one heart from the locker. And that's something I haven't really done much of. I mean, I've got an idea of how to do it, but it's trying to fit it in with all this mess of a code. But let's, so the comment's pretty accurate now. So instead of checking state, we'll just check direction. Which, if you remember, I've set up in my constants values here. So they've all got just numbers assigned to them. So instead of writing a number, I can just write up. So I'm comparing that to up, the constant. If they're not equal, we return. So if we're not facing up when we're in the trigger, it just gets out. It doesn't care that we're in the trigger. But if we are facing up, IX is pointing at the locker. All oh, right, we're getting current heart seat. See, at this stage, I think instead of having that, I'll do cool Z, collect heart from locker. Comment all that out. <coughs> See, what I would have thought worked, because we're iterating through this IX array, so we should be able to just stick with that and directly take the heart from that one, where, when, what I mean by that is the locker, it's in level two, there's a locker array here, and this is the amount of hearts that are contained in each locker. So I just want to reduce that by one. And then I need another routine checking how many we've got in here and drawing only the right amount there's more than one way of doing it though really it's better to just one off when we change this down to three go in and only draw three and then only one time do we have to do the draw but yeah it's not that straightforward unfortunately because in our draw code, right in the start, draw lockers, it just loads it with locker sprite. So every single frame, it's drawing that locker like that. Uh, yeah, with the hearts included. So I'd have to come in and draw over. I've got this byte here. I want to draw over. If I've if I've only got three, for example, I want to draw over all M7 only every frame after we draw the locker. Then, but it's annoying because then I've got to check if we've got two. Then I've got to go and do that and that. It's very tricky.
it's very easy to get waylaid. I think I'll deal with that separately, like I say. We'll just all we'll do here is we'll remove one of the hearts from the locker. Then we'll have another code doing the drawing in a minute. So annoyingly with the seats, I did have to store the cash like the ID of the seat. Still can't get my head around why. We can always move this. Yes, I was thinking that Moz. Yeah, maybe that is the key. The problem is, with doing that, is the heart is only 6 by 6. So we'd have to somehow mask. The, and also they're on slightly different levels, look. So the advantage of doing it my way is, like, obviously you can draw the sprite nicely laid out there without any hassle. Because I'd have to, I'd have to figure out what layer I'm on, so that I knew which one to mask. I'd also have to know which corner I'm in, so I'd have to know which bit to mask. So I think it's like an either or sort of thing, to be honest. If if that whole cell was an empty locker, your way would obviously be far, far better. You know, if the outline of the locker was a different cell. I hope that makes sense. It does to me. It would be lovely to have a different cell, but then the whole thing would be twice the size, wouldn't it? Just to, just to get rid of these bites, uh, these bits. You'd have to have a big chunky locker all the way around. This is the way I've done it. And at the end of the day, this is a good practice of like a fun technique if I manage to pull this off. It's not that hard if you think about it. Because we'll just have four take away the number of hearts that are in the locker. It will leave us with the amount of times we've got to go through at whatever function. Yeah, do you see what I mean? There's a problem either way, isn't there? The only other option is to draw a different locker that's fatter by two. And then I could have an empty cell for the heart. Which would have been much easier, but less pleasing on the eye, I think. This will give the illusion of like a higher resolution game, do you know what I mean? Because you've got the hearts squeezed into a smaller space. But yeah, it is a right pain. But the way I've got it in my head, it works, you know. Could try a little bit of pseudo code just down here. <coughs> so if I call n number of hearts in locker. And C is total hearts at start. Then we do if no, we do D equals. total so it's C minus N so if there's three hearts that are now in the locker D will equal one yeah yeah
so then we it's d is basically like it. Uh, so then d equals iterations. Then I need a loop. Could I break it into two? This is for a right pain, it really is. My P brain, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to then have. I'm going to then have. If. This is how moronic my brain is. I can't think of a better way. But it, this will work. But it's yet again the theme of how we've been doing it. If D. Equals. One. Cool. Del heart one because that way that way yeah I can just tailor right like I do with all the others exactly what bites I want to paint away you know what I mean or draw away or erase or whatever you want to call it redraw So that is like moronic, but can you fault that? Will that not work? I think it'll work. There's nothing sort of in intuitive or imaginative about that. And it is a pain, but I think we only have to do it for this one level anyway. But it shouldn't matter what level we're in. Win the message. Okay, good idea. Much better idea. And in fact, I don't have to worry about the offset. Uh, you know, because I don't care if, it, if it's slightly out, actually. Yeah, I liked your idea actually, that's perfect. I think that would work if I was insisting on doing my way. But your way seems much, much easier and more sensible like how a real programmer would do it. Um, in that case, I want to draw a really small heart to go in there. That means I'll have to blank out that, won't it? Sadly, I liked them. <laughs> Um, one, two, one. I think if we just move these ones down, when I say that, I mean if we just cope with that being down one near the bottom. And I don't need to do an art program then, I can just. Um, heart locker sprite, that'll do, won't it? Whoops.
对。There's nine there. What the hell? Using pad with zeros. Okay. I think this is going to work. Like you said, I'll just or this over the top of it. It looks kind of goofy now, doesn't it? Yeah, have we not had a bottom to the locker the whole time then? <laughs> One, two, three. Yeah, this looks perfect, doesn't it? And it was your idea. I think my brain had sort of thought of it and then I forgot it. I thought it was impossible because of the layout, but when you think about it, it doesn't matter if they're a little bit off skew. Yeah, what do I... Did, uh, did we just not notice that that wasn't getting drawn in the game, I guess? In that case, we'll do the heart like that. Quite a bit of progress, Geo, yeah. Yeah, it's been a tidy up mission. I've sectioned it out so each level each player has an update you have a whole whole file for the player level 2 as well as the level 2 itself and uh, we're just plugging through there but I don't know if it will compile yet to quickly show you it but we're basically trying to do uh, the lockers now where we've got them coloured in but we want to overlay the hearts so that we can take them away that was a different idea We've had to remove them sort of actually physically from the sprite. I'm trying to think, do I even want the base of the lock or did it look quite good without it, didn't it? Let's get rid of it now. Because I had one too many bytes. Or two too many. Oh, hang on. One, two, three. There's only seven there. How the hell have I managed that? Okay, I see. It's just a comment in the wrong place. <laughs> that could have been nasty. Perfect. So we'll just overlay it with that. That's the only problem is one side's going to be touching. You can't get around it. It's no big deal. It looks slightly better doing it this way. We're doing it already, but it's much harder to code. Bit shifting. Awesome. I'd love to do some repairs on hardware as well. I've got no space and no knowledge. <laughs> the bit shifting is a good idea, although it does give us the problem that we then have to worry about what um, what cell we're in. Whereas right now we don't.
I'll keep that there, but it's Just so I know it's not, if, if I read that back, I'll be thinking, what the hell? Alright, so we've got the empty locker. We've got most of the code done where we're going to remove the locker, uh, the, remove the heart from a locker. Here. I mean, IX is already pointing at at the specific locker. So the way I see it, <laughs> it is fascinating, isn't it? I love the I love the old software. I really mean to get into doing that. Like if I can get hold of cheap, broken consoles and just hope that I can fix them. <laughs> I've never tried. I've actually bought a soldering iron, especially to fix my car. You know, the wing mirror folds in and out by itself. One of them broke, and I found out you just have to solder a sort of yellow thing into it. But I still haven't done it. <laughs> I'd be rubbish at painting that sort of stuff, yeah. I think you need to get like a support for your arm, like on your desk. Do you know what I mean? So you get into leaning onto that. I mean, IX, like I say, is already put in at the exact byte. We don't even have to shift it along. I wonder, can I just do ink IX and deck? Oh, that's sad. I try and avoid medication, but sometimes you just have to if you're feeling bad, don't you? you have to trust it's going to work. It seems you can do deck IX. I mean, that's all we have to do. We'll then want to call a function that redraws that heart. Well, in fact, no, what we want to do now we're doing it that way is spawn a heart. Oh, no, they're all spawned. We need to spawn them all at the start, don't we? Okay. Draw a lock of hearts, I guess we'll do for now. I'm going to move this function. Each locker itself is going to have to have an array of four hearts. Better living through chemistry. I like um I like some things occasionally but not too much. Too expensive. Spikey is is that cheeky kid who steals all the hearts in school. <laughs> Just steals them. Steal your steals your heart. He's a, he's a heart throb. <laughs> and then he leaves. He goes to see his girlfriend now in the schoolyard. <laughs> <laughs> it 
it's worth a playthrough actually if you ever play c64 games or the zx one is actually fun as well but it's not very impressive looking but the arcade one and the c64 are pretty fun we i mean i've been tactically avoiding the collision on the ass blast i think i can manage it but but we've got to draw some sprites and do the bit shifting and all that. Which is going to be a doddle actually. Somewhere I need to know. I guess it's just an offset for each heart. And it's one X because there's going to be two, two offsets on the X. Well, no, because the first one's zero, and the next one's one. So maybe I don't need them. Okay, actually, I'm maybe complicating it more than it needs to be. When we've got, we've already got draw lockers somewhere. Let's just see if it draws an empty locker and can we compile? No, we can't. I don't think we need that because I can I can remember it. So I've put a cheat on so the door is ready for us to leave. Okay, we've got the empty lockers. Great. And each locker in the array already has a value to say how many hearts to draw. We're in that array right now here drawing the lockers. Before we end. So that's where we skip to the next one. This is where we need to do something else. We basically just need to go back over, depending on how many hearts there are. Are we still falling back on this? Are we? Are we? Am I still about to fall back on on this kind of logic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you in the ray? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I need to add it. I tried to add to my stream sound effects and pictures and stuff because I wanted the viewers to be able to interact with me and actually pop up things like that just for fun, you know. But I haven't quite managed to figure it out. But I'm still struggling here. Other than making four separate routines now, depending on what that number is. <clears throat> what else could I do? I'm gonna I'm gonna bash together my attempt while we think about that. I put draw locker hearts. I hope I I think I declared that, but then I think I deleted it. Right. So that's just gonna do this every time and return for every locker. 
I reckon we're going to run out of processing power soon on this level if we carry on like this. But load a ix compare four. Cool Z. Do you see what I mean? Now I'm having to make four. When it's an internal thing like this, I'm going to do shorthand. I don't like the shorthand actually. Do you see, you see how bad my logic is, like how weak it is? But can anyone come up with a better way? Do you even understand what I'm even trying to attempt here? Does it even make sense? All I want to know, obviously in C sharp or C++, this would have been complete. You know, I could have done it in a few lines probably. But here I'm having to continually make new routines, new subroutines. Yeah, yeah, and C sharp to be fair, because it's not really of you don't run into like slowness on C sharp games, do you? Right? And not like the past. Yeah, but isn't isn't C plus plus an OOP version of C? I get confused. I do. I really do. Hello, by the way. Thanks for saying hi. Always appreciate it. As I say, my weak ass logic here is all I can do. Manage code, yeah. That's what C C up. I guess yeah, object oriented doesn't sort of, sort of describe it that well, does it? I've been reading about something some new type of way of saying called data driven games like you know, supersede um, object oriented or something. I mean, I thought that's what procedural was before that, but like I say, I've very patchy knowledge at best. Yeah, you can't just point at the memory directly in C sharp, can you? You have to create like an instance or a static. I do like it, but I'm well out of practice with all the C varieties I think if I jumped back in now I'd go into C sharp again to, to tune up my knowledge but yeah C sharp C plus plus is definitely the one if you know all of them you, that's what you would choose I expect so it's literally that's gonna work for us isn't it it's gonna go call this it's going to check ix at the time, and if it's 4, 3, 2, or 1, it calls one of them. And if not, it just returns. Seems great to me. <clears throat> the thing is now the position in it for each one. Let's do call sprite, call draw sprite 8x8, eight eight. and I can go to that definition, find out what it wanted. Oh, nightmare. You know, 
I was surprised though if you get filters on your Streamlabs or your OBS you can really tweak the noise gate and unless they're really really noisy in your house you can tweak it in such a way that it probably won't um, trigger the mic unless you're talking at the same time because I was surprised the dog sounds so loud to me but you don't hear it very often on the screen thing is C++ is such a, there's an abundance of videos about it whereas Z80 there's hardly any so you know I think it's a much cooler subject I mean I, I, I intend to do assembly language in lots of different systems one day hopefully you know even up to like the 8080 or whatever it's called on windows you know but yeah it's pointless really all right so anyway i want bc to point at the heart spike and de to tell me what position This is slightly overblown because I've got to use A to add the offset for each one. Oh, if you've already been asked, then fair play, yeah. Can you write like networked games in C? That's where I was just getting to when I was learning, but I didn't quite crack that, that egg. But Basically, I've done it all in C sharp. Then I found out writing network code was quite a bugger in that. Moved over to Unreal Engine and also just C sharp, C plus um, plus, like writing console and text apps. And then I went on to C SDL, just using the window and then drawing stuff a bit like what I'm doing now. But then I found this and I fell in love with it because of the small, small, small instruction set. Um, so load BC heart locker sprite. What I want is D to be X and E to be the Y position for the heart. But that's stored in IX. IX plus one. So now we're we're at the locker's top left corner. We're doing the X value, so I want to add nothing for the first one. Is that right? Yeah, add zero on the X. Don't know why I made a big deal of that. In that case, just load B with A. I think it was B. I keep having to check. My brain is very bad for that. So oh, it's D E C. I should have known because B's up there. Alright, so now E wants the Y position. So I load it into A with Y. I will add one. No, it's 16 I've got to add. No, <laughs> 8. I set up a convenient constant to remind me that it is 8 per cell. So I've moved it down one character cell and load E with A. And that, that should actually draw one heart now. So if I put one heart in one of them lockers, let's try it out. How 
I think there's nothing else that needs to be done, but let's just try. There's bound to be something I've forgotten about. Oh, excellent. I forgot to ore it. That's no problem. I'm just reading your comments. I missed them. Unreal is really tricky, but when you get the hang of it, it's clean. But they do everything, they do force you to do everything in a, in a weird way. You like the platform games, yeah? I, I, I honestly, I fell in love with Mario 1, and I, I actually think there'd be no other platforms that are better than that. Fire and Ice is like a puzzle game, isn't it? Zool. Yeah, I had Zool on it, crack. <laughs> Manic Miner and Jet Set Willie, I think I played when I was very young, but I didn't actually like them. I think I was slightly beyond that generation, where my generation, we had something slightly better, even from the word go, and I thought it was a bit weak, but now I know what a classic it is, you know, having looked back. That's a good approach for the network. I should have done that. I wrote a full working game and then tried to add network play to it. It didn't work. Because it had all ray casting and all that, and it wasn't network specific, so you could shoot and it would always kill the same person <laughs> on everyone's screen. It didn't really make sense. And it took me you know, weeks of messing around to even get it working. I'm well happy with that though, that looks pretty great. Let's just ore it instead. Might have to modify this. Um, do I want to do it on all of them? I think it won't hurt to just do it on all 8x8 sprites. This is where we're actually poking it into the into the RAM, into the memory of where our screen is stored. So just before then. And in fact, let's do the copy and paste trick, the find and replace trick. So where was it? It was just after load ABC. Control enter space 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 space. Oh, I don't even need to do that. Wait, yes, I do, but not in there. So I'm on just my selection. I want to replace it with that, but here's where I want them four spaces. Or A. No, that doesn't work. How did I do it now? Excuse me. Load D with the contents of HL, which we're about to fill with that poke below. Oh, God, I've done A. Load D because D's okay. Yeah, D's not in use. Right to there. Or D. Pretty sure that's going to do it for us. Also, that D there isn't needed. Try out. Can't remember what in here in this room was an eight by eight sprite. Maybe the stool. 
anyway it seems to be working I'm gonna have to zoom in I can't see oh, it works absolutely brilliantly perfect so the only drawback with this that's now working isn't it but for two we need that and then we just need another one as well but it's okay my understanding isn't brilliant but as far as I do understand it having loads of code doesn't actually amount to a big um, program by the time Pasmo finishes with it, with it. I actually managed to write a master server in C sharp code mic which was actually a master server version of my game so it ran in just a console on my computer and anyone could connect to it via an IP which I hard coded into the game but that was as far as I ever got and then yeah that's what I was thinking geo it does it crunches it down doesn't it because I noticed the tap files are normally pretty small even if I write huge code I must admit I haven't looked at the size of this one. Can't really do it in here. Um, anyway, this draws two sprites now. So we need to move along. Well, we just need to put... It's the exact same thing again. Don't need to load the PC again. I don't think. <clears throat> y will be exactly the same. Yeah, it is. It helps you understand how it's all working on a raw level, I think. Like, really, before I got into assembly, I didn't realise that every single instruction in assembly language has its own machine code version. So this can be directly written on paper in ones and zeros. It's all this code, if I really wanted to. And I didn't know that. Whereas C++ and all the others have to convert it somehow. You know, they don't have a direct instruction, but all of their keywords. <coughs> so, therefore, this just becomes much easier to understand exactly what the processor is doing with it. Yeah, I was reading all about it. I loved reading about it. Because I must admit, I read for about three weeks before I even done any code. Punch cards as well, yeah. I bet they would, honestly though, before they done punch cards, they were writing that down on paper beforehand, probably. And then doing the punch cards, do you know what I mean? Amazing stuff. But I guess back then they were probably talking about like maybe one kilobyte of program at the most, I don't know, maybe less. But I'm definitely no expert there, it's all guess, guesswork from my, my, heart, my part there. All we've got to do here is add the X with 1. So we can just ink A actually. Let's check it out. Locker, level 2. Put 2 in there. I would love to come up with a way of skipping this level entirely, but I think it's just needless complication. Oh, there's no second heart. There's some glitch. I think that's just because BC got corrupted and I banked on it not getting changed. So I could either push and pop or just load it. See if that works. Oof. Just do want to do a bum, do a bum shuffle just for the fun of it. That's working pretty good now. The offset thing I was talking about. Well, I guess.
We could do the bit shift thing we were talking about. Wouldn't be that hard, would it? Oops. We just want to roll the second heart to the left. One. Where are you? What ideas are I love silly ideas. That's what this whole channel is based on, man. <laughs> My whole life based on it, basically. Is it? If we just ignore the carry, we will just want to shift it, but we don't want to keep it that way. Uh, can I just do that in bit whilst, whilst it's in BC? Because that's 16 bit. Oh, that's the pointer, of course. Damn it, would I need a different one of these? I think I do. I'm going to have to create another one of them. This is my pea brain at work again. Just copy paste. Life. Doing cases. Um, do you mean like states? Or do you mean a case as in a whole? Like, I call it states if it, if it can only be one state at a time. Like a mode, I guess. Anyway, if I just call this Shift L one, Shift left one. This is funny. BC ends up putting at the sprite. I don't want to move BC, but what I want is to bit shift A. To the left. Just let me look at Z80 heaven a sec. There's loads of these different bit shift things. And weirdly enough, some of the right ones have, the L, have an L in them. So I think it's like R L A. R L A performs R L space A, but it's much faster. So what's R L space A? Nine bit rotation to the left. I don't want to put it in the carry though. RLC copies it to the carry. RL. Nine bit nine bit rotation to the left. The register's bits are shifted left. The carry value is put into the zeroth bit of the register. I don't want that. That could create a pixel, couldn't it? I want to just drop whatever's leaving. I know you can do that, there's a lot of them in there. SLA, I think this might be it. It doesn't even say what SLA does, but I think SLA is the one. I could have done that copy and replace thing, I think, but I can't be bothered. I probably should have. All right, so like I say, this is real pea brain coding, but. 
it should, it should work. Gives us the option to shift it left or not just by calling the two, one of the two. It's looking pretty good, I think. Oh. Looking goddamn good. It has three, it skips the four and just draws nested three, two, one. Yeah, basically it, it can only call one of these. So if I called three or two, it doesn't call that as well. So I have to copy it. I think that's what you're saying. There's definitely better ways of doing it, but sometimes just whatever's easiest is the best way, and you know, for your brain to understand. Because now, look, we're on the we're on the version three. We're going to draw the first two. All we need to do is move A down, isn't it, further than we, what we're doing. So let's just test it, why not? So call the previous up. Yeah, I could probably do that. Probably a very good shout. Yeah. I can change that in a minute. If you think about it, that actually does cause more memory because when you use call, it has to store a byte to know where it called it from. And then going back there also uses something. But I do, I get what you're saying now. So I'll try it out. I mean, it's not going to do it any noticeably slower right now. I think we can speed him up still if we want to. I could speed the game up, I should say. That looks pretty good. Hang on a second, though. I wonder, is there a way to shift it upwards one? That's not quite so easy. I think I won't bother. No, you were dead right there, Gio. That, that just proves how you've got a more, better logical brain than me. Because I couldn't think of that. I knew there was a way. My brain was telling me there was a way. But what you're saying is I could just go... Like, instead of having this, I could just... Do draw hearts one, can I? I think I'll keep it the way I've written it now, purely because of what I just said. It actually saves a tiny bit of processing power and space. I think tiny bit of space. No, you were dead on, man. You you hit the nail on the head. It was a very good idea. Shame I couldn't think of it. It's like I say, though, when you're on air, it's so much harder to code. Trust me, it really is. If I'm just on my own, I just plug away. Some better ideas seem to just flow out of you. So let me get this right. I think we want to copy this really. That's the bottom right one. Just times that by two. They should be all good now. I don't much until I run into the problem and then it's like, oh. 
<laughs> spoiled. <laughs> I'd just been ignoring memory space completely because I I ran into processing power before, <laughs> and I quickly learned the hard way on that one. You know, they should all be filled now nicely. Hey. I mean, yes, we've got some glitching going on at the side there, and I don't, I don't know what's causing that. For now, I'm going to live with it because, and there is more down the bottom. Look, but um, it looks like that line is getting taken from there and put there. You see, it's kind of visual what's happening there actually. So it's in the wrong segment somehow. But I'm going to ignore it. I don't want to spend hours on that. At all. I don't care about it. I don't think it's anything to do with our code necessarily. Well, not like an error in the code, I should say. I think it's just not good enough code. It's not quick enough. It is weird. It's just one line getting taken from that segment and put into the segment below. But it only have oh hang on that's in the double buffering actually because in the double buffering we take half of a line at a time it's in segment one or well, it's actually in segment two problem I think it's taking the line from segment one Yeah. Oh, thank you for the follow, ZX. Nice to meet you. More the merrier. <laughs> Getting very close to that 50 now. Let's have a look at the game again, see if we can actually work out what line it is. Or at least roughly. Morning, Micro. Grab your coffee. Yeah, thanks, Dex Dunny. Thanks for the follow. Very much appreciate. Do a little arse bash on the way. Oh, I've shut down. Yeah, that's what I was doing. I was going to check, try and check, figure out what line it is. It's tough though, isn't it, doing that? It looks like it's like halfway through the segment actually. Do you know what? I'm really not fussed about it though because I am 99% sure it's just one number in here or here that's got the wrong segment on it or whatever. And I think I, what I'm going to do is ignore it because when I'm sitting around watching TV on my own and videos, I can just browse that slowly bit by bit, you know, and I won't get bored doing it. And I think I'll find that eventually. What's that by the exit sign? Is that on level one or two? Or both? That looks perfect to me, that exit sign. It's flashing because we've got the cheat on, thinking it, we've already collected all the hearts. It, it looks perfect to me, the exit sign. It's not glowing now because we haven't got all the hearts in this level. Level 2. We're on level 2 now. Obviously there's this glitch here. I've got a good idea of what's causing that. It's a pain in the bum. But has it gone away? Sometimes you do get the odd glitch. Just from walking around and holding the keys too long. I've noticed that. That's weird, isn't it? Yeah, so you can't do the arse bash in this level. It's really good. I've got different controls for each level. And I've got full control in my code of how to do that. It's brilliant. We could actually make like every level different if we wanted. We could even have obviously a different sprite if we wanted to. Oh, the heart. Yeah, that is that's a known about problem. It's not really a problem. The reason for that is as a temporary UI, 
I'm just using that whiteboard area at the back as a, as a UI just for now. So when I collect a heart, you'll see it goes in there. And if the cheat wasn't on, you'd have, let's turn the cheat off. So in level one, where I initialize the state that I've put hearts collected to five, which is the amount you need to complete the level as well. What I should have is zero. Now I'll, you'll see what how it should be played. So obviously there's people in the seat and there's a guy throwing teeth at you and that. So you notice that the exit sign isn't flashing. And there you go, got five. Obviously that UI won't be there, but if it was, I would clear it now in the init function. We've got a level level two init. I'd just clear them hearts away. But yeah, that's the reason for that. I'm popping down the shop in about 20 minutes. So I was just waiting for the rush hour to end, really. I've been wanting to go and get some drink and food. Come back after refreshments. I'm going to do another like three, four hour session. And then probably another couple of hours after that as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes I just expect that everyone knows sometimes. But feel free to ask and we're trying to answer <laughs> what's going on. Um, the only thing I need to do here now, we've got the thing that draws the lockers, constantly checking the values of hearts. We've got in the player, we go through each locker. If we're in the collisions trigger zone of the locker, we've got to collect heart from locker. So we just need to check, are we facing up and are we pressing F at this point? I don't know why that's there. Oh, that's the bottom of there and it shouldn't say stall. It should say that. Lucky I saw that because that could have caused me right confusion. Also, that's wrong. You know it, man. I might have to have a bit of the whiskey live, you know, have a little couple of snifters, as they sort of call it. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing level two? I'll give you a run through because you obviously you might not have played the game. I have mentioned this several times in the videos as well, so I don't want to repeat myself too much. But you collect the hearts like you do there. Oh, I've got to do the cheat. Well, let's make it obvious what I'm doing. Level one total hearts. So you would collect all them and then the exit sign would flash. That's how this level works. You've got to nudge people off seats. So there's they're sitting down. You've got to like nudge them like that about four times in the right place. And then they're off the seat. Then you go. This time you have to, there's no sitting and there's no arse bash, but you have to be deadline with it, facing up, and then press F. And then you get a heart. So you've got to go do 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 and then get to the next one. Do, do, do. In the actual real Spectrum version, you've got to press up and F at the same time. But I actually hate that feature. I think it makes the game so horrible to play. So I'm just going to do facing up and F. So it's. I could add this right now, but I'd probably leave it until I get back, just in case we get problems. Because at the moment it's working beautifully, exactly as I expected it to. I do want to quickly test though, actually. I might do it quickly right now. Sod it. I'll upload it to GitHub so I can come back. Lockers 2. <laughs> Uh, 
Remember, we're in a spiky nightly this time round. Soon it will have to be time for some fun stuff, I think, where I actually just draw his hair, draw the teacher, rather than just pure code. Because I do want to get some extra graphics in there and colour them in. It's quite fun. But I'll finish level two first, you know, the, the functionality of it. It was done in. Is it done in player? Yeah. So yeah, we just call this. Why have I, <laughs> why have I decked I act? Oh, that's just removing a heart, yeah. That's actually good. The collect heart is badly named because that's in level one. So that already removes the heart. Hang on. Shouldn't that work then? If I was a bit dubious about if that would work, this instruction here, but it says in that guideline reference that it does. So that should knock it down from four to three. As soon as we're facing up in that, you'd think it would have unloaded the locker. And then it would have got back to the draw code, just checked how many lockers are in there. So it doesn't add any heart to Mikey's tally, but it should be removing the sprite, I would have thought. So if this doesn't work, maybe I will just have to call it a break here at three hours. That gives me a chance to eat and have a, maybe a little look at it. So I don't waste everyone's time with so stupid. Because as far as I can tell, I should be able to just go up here and look up and they should be going. Ah, I know what it is, I think. Yeah, I do know what it is. I haven't called that. Let's copy it. So it wants IX as a loading. I think the best place to check for the collision is in the level 2 update method. Where do we check for desk collision in level 1? Oh, player. Okay, yeah, to so player level two update. This is what I mean. It's a bit of a hodgepodge of code, this, but I can live with it. So it already checks for collision with the locker to stop you walking through a locker. We'll do it there. And I'm probably going to start checking as well because you have to load it twice in case you change IX, which you will be. But you could always push IX and pop IX there. So I want to find out. That's like an optimization, but I don't know which one is the best and how much difference it makes. So, oops. I'll just leave it as the obvious one for now. Happy snacking. You know it, man. I go away. I'm hungry. I was thirsty mainly, actually. Uh, I reckon this will just walk up to the lockers and empty it now. No, damn it. Something else is needed. Oh, it could just be that the collision offsets are not right. So when I get back, the next stage is going to be. Uh, oh, it is a mess. Can't avoid it being a mess, unfortunately. It was in just general play, I think. Lock a trigger. <clears throat> we'll do the paint background here. Uh, border, sorry. <coughs> to pink, sorry. So it should go pink now when, when we start colliding. We don't need the cool Z there either. That could have been what it was messing it up. 
Nothing removes the fourth heart. It does, doesn't it? Collect heart from locker. Deck IX. Oh, we can't see that. Cool, collect heart from locker. That decreases IX, which is pointing at the uh, lockers in level 2, which is here. And the first value is the amount of hearts. Let's try it. This might work now. And if not, like I say, I'm going off just maybe an hour max. No. Try some others because we did have problems with just one. Do you know it's the number four again? I could always change them to five and just nudge them all up. Still being drawn? No, it's not because. Draw lockers, right? We draw empty locker, then we draw. Oh, yeah, where is it? We draw the empty locker here. After that, we draw the hearts only if that equals one, two, three, or four. So it should have gone down to zero by now when we walked up to it. I'm setting it. I know it's very hard to follow someone else's code, I'm just flicking through it. It's much easier for me to understand this code than you guys, I, I fully get that. But this should be decreasing that number that we then check before we draw. It is pushed to GitHub, so just push it again. If you get bored in the hour and you want to tinker, feel free. You'll be able to see it yourself then, but it's a bit of a mess of code now. You'd have to be pretty experienced just to pick the bones out of that, I reckon. You're better off if you're learning, just looking at small programs. But that's the bit I'm worried about, Deck IX. Perhaps I just need to do something as simple as load A IX, Deck A, load IX A. You never know. Work a try. No. Not to worry. I'm gonna when I get back I'm gonna go through it line by line. There's some one call's missing or something. I'll look at the compare four three one jump routine. Okay. Thank you. As far as I can tell with that one, it won't affect the flags because that's only going to get called if it's equal. And if it's not equal, it's going to go straight to there and check. Same, same. And if it's not any of them, it just returns and doesn't draw any hearts, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I'll have a little break. Hopefully we'll come back and fix it quite quickly. Can't be too much wrong with it, I don't think. Yeah, no worries. Really enjoyed it again with all your chats. It's really fun. And I'll be back as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.